Hey, I'm Larry Kirkpatrick for Horizon Watch. 45 months ago, back all the way back in March 2020, the world shut down. I wanted to revisit a couple of things because that event marked decisive movement toward the end point of Babylon described in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. Now, there are a number of people who have a misunderstanding of prophecy, and they don't engage in serious study of the book of Revelation after its third chapter. But God's final pre-second coming global intervention is seen in Revelation 18. You can look it up. Three sets of powers finally control the globe. Corporate powers, called the merchants of the earth in Revelation 18, verses 3, 11, 15, and 23. And then we have the second group, the political powers, they're called the kings of the earth, back there in Revelation 18, verses 3 and 9. And the combined apostate religious powers mentioned in Revelation 18, verses 2 to 8, and also in verse 10 and 16. Now, a lot of people teach that believers are raptured after Revelation chapter 3, and they avoid the tribulation. I know that. But that's no more true than that the Hebrews enslaved in Egypt were delivered without any effort on their part. See, then God's people were tested and passed through that tribulation after marking their doorposts with blood. Revelation teaches a last generation of Christians will be similarly tested. Now, by now you've heard of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. Back in 2021, I did a video uh, reaction to this book he wrote, COVID-19, The Great Reset. So in his book, Schwab claimed that, quote, there's nothing new about the confinement and lockdowns imposed upon much of the world to manage COVID-19, unquote. Of course, that's definitely not correct. Also, he said, quote, we're at war, but with an enemy that's invisible, unquote. Well, I think we can actually locate some of these enemies. He also urged that, quote, we should take advantage of this unprecedented opportunity to reimagine our world, unquote. So Schwab and his fellow travelers uh, present themselves as, as the kind of persons whose activities shall characterize the powers identified in Bible prophecy at Revelation chapter 18. But with a twist. Their worldview is technocratic. Technocracy arose as, about a century ago as a secular movement to replace representative democracy with experts using science to manage the civilization and its energy consumption. You can read about it and find out about all this. Now, a threefold set of wealthy corporations, state, and religion is described in Revelation chapters 13 and 18 as compelling people to obey them. They will have total economic control and people will not be able to buy or sell apart from their approval. But how does our world change from what it now is to what the future prophetic snapshot there in Revelation 18 shows us. How does it get from A to B? On a societal scale, expectations about rights are going to change. Respect for individual conscience will be changing. Respect for individual conscience is going to decrease. There would be a change of emphasis from the individual to the collective. There will be a cartelization, a collusion, a working together to control populations. And finally, we can expect that certain stories will be created and told to the masses while others are censored. Sounds a lot like the way things have been in the last couple of years, doesn't it? Now, Revelation 13, 11 describes a historical entity having conflicting characteristics. The two horns like a lamb show it will manifest some of the qualities of Jesus, but in the end, it speaks as a dragon and it exercises satanic qualities, deceiving and forcing people to do what the first beast back there, Revelation 13, 1 to 10, commands. Now, Protestants have historically identified the first beast of Revelation 13 as the papacy, while the Revelation 13, 11 beast corresponds to an America finally forsaking its original principles, abandoning religious freedom, and uniting with the first beast to compel its observances. Which brings us back to Schwab and his book. Schwab uh, is, is all in for the big control that we saw in 2020 and today. He pushes collectivist thinking. Let me give you a couple of quotes here on this. Quote, we are now in the same boat. Humanity has to take care of the global boat as a whole, unquote. He viewed mask wearing during the pandemic as a moral choice. Quote, refusing to wear a mask in public is a moral choice, as indeed is the decision to wear one, unquote. And this is Schwab again. He urges those in power to make the fullest use of the situation to bring about dramatic changes in the world. 
Here's a quote from his book again. Without delay, we need to set in motion the Great Reset. The pandemic gives us this chance. It represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world, he said. Now, this is again, this book was published in, uh, in 2020. Now, just months ago, however, this year, this is the end of 2023 as I'm filming. We're just coming up into December. Just months ago, this year, about nine months ago, in an address at the World Governments Summit in Dubai, Schwab updated and urged world leaders to continue making the changes already set in motion. Let's give you two or three minutes here of that. Uh, listen. Our life in 10 years from now will be completely different, very much affected, and who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. Now, what does it mean for governments, for government officials? Four things. First, since we speak about the transformation process, we have to be ambitious. In our thinking, how do we want to come out at the end of this transformation process? We have to seize the opportunities because we, through joint efforts, we could really make this world a better place by using the capabilities we have. So, ambition is very important. Believing into the positive force of those transformational changes. The second advice is to have the speed. You cannot catch up with the new technologies. You have to be a front runner because otherwise you will be on the losing outside. Adaptability is the next factor. And adaptability requires permanent upskilling and reskilling. And the last factor. I want to mention is resilience, the capability to bounce back, because there will be certainly what we call the black swans, the unpleasant surprises which will come in our way. So, Minister, dear participants, I wish you very good meeting. And just as a last point, I want to say the most important factor to master the future is leadership. Friends, our world is rapidly moving toward a time, whether it's this set or a future set of leaders, when corporate, political, and religious powers will consolidate control and compel conscience. The years our civilization has just passed through warn us that we are in a dangerous time and that now, more than ever, we should put our spiritual house in order. We have entered a time of global upheaval. Many are unready. Do you know the one who died on the cross to give you life? And are you walking in a way that he can bless you and your family? An important question for us at this time. God bless you.